What's up, everybody? This is your girl, CC with Where It Begins Magazine, and I got my co-host, Theo, on the line. Hey, Theo, how are you today? Hey, I'm good as always, CC. How are you? I'm good. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, man. Listen, another Wednesday where we bring you guys some dope people and another round of dope interviews, man. So I'm excited to get to it today. Yes, me too. Wow. We have a special guest on the line with us. I'm going to let her introduce herself for who she is, where she's from, and what she does. Hey, thank y'all for having me so much. I'm just so honored. I'm DJ C. Devone, a.k.a. Crystal Devone, multimedia producer, DJ, also podcast producer. And uh, I live in Buckhead in Atlanta by way of New York City. You know, you never get rid of the New York in you. But now I'm here to stay in Atlanta, so I'm happy to be here. Awesome. We're ha happy to have you. But yeah. tell us a little bit of how you got into your journey and how you got to where you are today. Ooh, well, oh, where do you begin? Uh, you know, I was just having a conversation about purpose yesterday and someone said, are you living in your purpose? And I was like, yeah, because the thing about purpose and how I got to the journey of uh, you know, multimedia producer is I look at who I was when I was a kid. So in my office, it's blurred out now, but like uh, I have a picture of me as a kid and I'm just like this big energy. I always was talking. I always was telling a story and they were like, I was like, I'm in my purpose of storytelling. And that's why people like you who tell people's stories, like it's so in purpose. Like you think about yourself in kindergarten like if you got everyone to round up and like be so interested in your story, like maybe you're a storyteller. People are so unsure like what they want to do and their passions, but it's always right in front of you. So when I started out, I was singing. I went to um, LaGuardia High School, which is a school in New York City where Nicki Minaj went to. It's a really big performing arts high school. And I've always been into the arts. And the day that um, I was like singing, I was trying to dance, I was doing everything. And one of my friends was like, the day you like you start DJing, I think you're gonna make a lot of money. And I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. I made my first hundred dollars. I was like, I ain't looking back at singing anymore. <laughs> and then from there, it just, you know, it literally led so many doors open to the other gifts I had. Well, whether if do I want to DJ forever forever? Yes, I do. But also I want to tell stories. I want to help podcasters. I want to help creatives. So like I just am so fortunate now where I work for you know major companies to produce their shows and their content and also get to still DJ around the world. So that's it's just a privilege to be there. Wow. Yes, that's been a journey. But let me ask you who would you consider to be your DJ legend? Ooh, I mean, Jazzy Jeff, like, I mean, he is, oh my gosh, he's so cool. Like, he's just really in the craft and like with DJ, and there's some people who are in it for the money, who are in it for the fame. And like, he's truly like a person who like loves music and even like listening to like Will Smith's book and like really like following up with Jazzy Jeff and his career. Like he just literally just was like a music buff. And I just appreciate people who listen to music and just want to be so enwrapped in sounds and the journey of music. You know, you know, those people, when you listen, they listen to a song, they hear things different. They're like, oh, wait, let me, ah, you're like that. That's what I think he is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Go ahead, Theo. <laughs> well, no, so so take us back. Like uh, when, when you first, you know, decided to DJ and the first time that you you got in front of people and, you know, a real, real crowd and did it. Like what, what was that feeling like? What, what was going through you? Oh, that's such a great question. Because um, uh, it's like two parts because there's like your first gig where you just like, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> I'll take you $100 and be out. And then there's like the first corporate gig. And I just, the, the backstory behind that is like, I had just had a breakup. I had just like moved across the United States of America. And mm -hmm. like, I was like, I can't do this. And I came back and I got this big gig with uh, L'Oreal Dark and Lovely. And I was like, they're going to pay me like a thousand dollars. Like what? And this is, the, I mean, 2011, I believe. Mm -hmm. So that was one, that was a lot of money for me. And two, it was just like, okay, I got to do good. But it goes back to when you're supposed to be somewhere, you're supposed to be somewhere. Because that first gig led me to do uh, advertorial where I literally then three weeks later, I was in Ma Essence Magazine under DJ C. Devone's name, not just a face or a model. Like 
talking about my power and what makes me resilient. And I just remember just everything that I had done going to Howard University, going to the clubs all the time because I was in the clubs. I was there listening to music. I was always listening to transitions that DJs were doing. So mm. it led me to be like, I was, I felt very confident um, when I was DJing because I was just always musical. My dad was a musician. So even though I would say it took me a long time to get comfortable switching songs fast because I was like, okay, I don't know. I just want to give them what they want. You know, I learned that along the way, but I, I was scared, but I was like, you know, you sit in that seat and you're like, oh, I'm supposed to be here. Mm-hmm. That's literally how I felt. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. So yeah. like what? So starting out from there to, to where you are now, like what, what kind of lessons have you really learned? Like that advice and jewels you can drop on, you know, somebody else that was your former self in that position, uh, looking to move forward. Cause you know, we all try things out and it might be a passion, but you know, mm-hmm. they might not be the person to, to work it out. But what, what type of advice would you drop for them? Woo, we don't got all day for that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, honestly, this is the best advice like my whole y'all are in good hands because I'm like the biggest mental health advocate like I really really take the time to learn everything about my mental health from disorders to really understanding like ADHD like why it is probably good I am a DJ because I get to listen and see and it helps me focus because I do have ADHD as y'all can see from my schedule (laughs) you know like it is really important to tap into your gifts and your flaws so that's my biggest advice and people like oh my gosh I just can never grasp things well you don't grasp things because you're learning it in a way that doesn't work for you if you're a super visual learner like people say oh go on YouTube YouTube University does not work for me I need someone to tell me and I need to ask questions because I'm a, a, a visual learner, but I need to be hands on as well. And when I learned that, it makes so much sense for me. But I really, the biggest advice I would say is to spend time with yourself mm. and have grace with yourself on your journey. Because as long as you keep trying, like you're just not going to fail. And it goes back to what I said, you, your talents are going to make so much room for you because you're going to be committed to it. I said last night, someone's like, well, if I want to be Beyonce. I can't be Beyonce. No but you may be the Beyonce of this industry if you pay attention to what you've already been doing. If you're a person who always gives great advice, what what is the qualities, why people want to listen to you? Is it because you ask the right questions? Is it because you have a nice voice? Is it because you just are very nurturing in spirit? All different things were from being a teacher to being a therapist to being a podcaster, a podcast producer, so many things. And the, the one thing that the best advice I got was when I was DJing and I was an event planner for about 15 years. Mm. And I love event planning, but that is the most thankless, hardest job ever. <laughs> and mm. the moment that someone told me, they said, when you can marry being a DJ and an event planner together, you are going to make so much money. And I was like, yeah, okay, well, what is that? What does that even mean? when I put those two together because it didn't exist. I couldn't see the vision, but God (laughs) saw that there was going to be a whole industry called podcasting, Uh which literally is an event planner logistics and DJing understanding audio where I can go in. And even when I'm not ready, like a day where today was all over the place, I still have different backup audios ready to go for things I still have ways and filters if I don't have makeup I know so many tools and tips Mm -hmm. along the way because everything's preparing you and when you sit in it you're like oh I'm I'm supposed to be here so it goes back to like that first DJ gig you know I'm supposed to be living in Arizona maybe in a housewife somewhere I don't know like that was the journey that I had for myself in my 20s and I'm like oh that ain't that ain't what it's supposed to be. That's not what it's supposed to be. But I cried. I had a lot of grace. And that's really the biggest, I hope that is, that touches someone because that is, I'm telling you, I'm not who I was back then. And I'm excited to get to know me. Just always be ready to get to know yourself in so many different ways, because you may not even want to be friends with who you were at 18, 20, maybe even 30. 
Mm. evolving and just getting to know your best self I think is really going to always make you money and always keep you in the best tribe ever which is important gotcha sounds like a a a long journey since then what's your what's your biggest accomplishment to date and and how did you get to that point Ooh, you know it changes every day because I go back to the humbling experiences of like that first Florio gig you know Mm -hmm. but I think about like things like curl fest where it's like 20,000 people in Brooklyn just Mm -hmm. having a good time or I think about DJing in front of you know the pyramids of Giza you know and it was like on my birthday like those that's not a coincidence that's that's like only you know divine intervention of being able to have that or DJing in Croatia where we're like the only black boat and we got the most excellence of boats the most excellent of peoples I'm DJing and it's just a good time so I look at some of those like resume things but I always say that I'm most proud of really learning who I am, making jobs and opportunities for people through my own company and podcasting. Also, every time I'm hired at where I'm at United Masters, I'm at Vice Media now, I'm always pulling someone. And if I have an assistant or associate producer, they are always in good hands with me. She makes a mistake. I'm like, okay, where are we at today? You need a mental health break? What's going on? And then now she feels comfortable telling me, my dog is at the vet. I'm not feeling good. I had a bad day. Okay, what can I take off your plate? Because I've been there. I've done that. And I know how to make room for other people. So that's the biggest accomplishment that I always would say is where I find just true satisfaction, knowing that I went through every thing possible and still can help somebody along the way that's true reward for me now the money it comes and goes in entrepreneurship you already know some days you have a lot of money some days you may not work for two months and that's going to just be a part of the you know the journey but as I say if you keep staying in purpose it always it's going to come on time may not be your time but it's always going to come on time amen to it but um, for 2022, what are some things that we could look forward to? I just asked someone this last night. Y'all, y'all are on it. Y'all were at my dinner yesterday. I was just like, to be honest, I just want to go outside. Like, I want to be outside. I want to spend my money. I want to, like, really enjoy things. Uh, maybe really working on my own company a little bit more, Seat of Own Sight and Sound, where I have clients that I'm producing for. But I think I have a lot to share. And I want to bring back some of my podcasting. I'm really excited for all the stuff at United Masters that we're doing. They're pumping out so much content and so much stuff at SelectCon. So that's like really dope. Refinery29 is doing the glow up here in Atlanta for Juneteenth weekend. I am going to be DJing probably everywhere Juneteenth. I'm a Howard alum. Um, Most recently, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated member. So like, I'm going to be outside enjoying myself and really just just being a service, just showing up where I can. But I'm going to enjoy this life. Like this summer, I feel like last summer was like just getting to know Atlanta. Now I feel like I want to know. The thing about Atlanta, I think especially, is you could do anything you want to do as long as you create it for yourself if that makes sense like people go to the same things over and over and over Mm -hmm. well you don't have to do that here there's so many different things where I'm like you know what you could do this you could do that that. and that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna have fun (laughs) definitely a lot of trends uh coming out of Atlanta and and it's it's really easy to catch your own wave here so like Flash forward five years from now, what, what, what do you what do you want us to, to think about the brand? Oh, I'm going to be the Sylvia Runner podcasting. That's that's in my bio. Like I'm going to take if I touch any podcast, it's going to make it's going to make money. It's going to be lucrative. And I really just want I mean, I'm just going to be frank. I just want black people to make a lot of money in it. It's really, it's really like my life purpose. If I die tomorrow, like if I made you know, million dollars for other black storytellers. That's, that's my goal. And five years from now, I want like, did you get C. Devone on that? Oh, then yeah, that's the person who's going to be able to tell the stories to get you to where you need to be. Or I pray that my next steps are to get people to get more endorsements, partnerships, 
lots of money because they're out there and people want like these advertisers they they need this they need (laughs) y'all you know so like that's that's five years from now like that's what I want to do and be with someone's son so that's it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, definitely uh good good luck on the second part uh first part <laughs> you're, definitely, you're, you're already making your ways uh yeah hey talk to us man uh at our model booth and at where it begins magazine uh and then we got some stuff going with a uh music trivia night show uh definitely we're always looking for ways to increase our footprint and our brand so mm-hmm. so definitely uh any any partnerships or advice that you can give uh there, there are plenty of people in that market that definitely need it Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm trying to share every wealth of knowledge that I got and keep it together with ADHD. <laughs> yeah, that's the key, keeping it together. Um, I guess one more question before we go into our game thing. Out of all the places you've been to, what has been your most memorable one um, as far as life? Hmm. I think Croatia is really cool, but Egypt has to be the coolest place. And I used to have to do events in China. China's just like, I feel like every Black person should just go to China. Like, it's just such cultural shock. <laughs> like, so like everything you think here is like, it's like either the opposite or, you know, America has this very big pop and stance of like, we being such so forward. Then you go to other countries and you're like, oh we're behind (laughs) like you know roads technology but Egypt was just really cool like just because just to see like like I like my brain is thinking like how did they build this they didn't have no cranes they didn't have this like who thought to mix these ingredients together and then make this so when I see things like that I'm like so we are complaining about what again because people were doing so much more with less a lot less. even the kings and queens they didn't have half of the stuff that we have now you know technology being able to just hop on do this here you know like just the accessibility of things so i always say like egypt is definitely you know i definitely want to do like ghana and south africa but egypt just a history and and of course the Bronx is always wows me just kidding (laughs) that's where I'm from you know just throw the Bronx the Bronx is just its own little craziness in itself (laughs) right well we like to do a um fun fact game where we throw you one question a piece so we'll go into that and let's see what you got for Theo oh you're gonna put me on the spot first (laughs) all right so uh, podcasting seems seems to be, you know, a slight interest with you. So I'll, I'll tailor the question around that. So let's say you could, uh, you know, you, you had the ability to go to any any person, anytime, any place uh, to host a podcast and you got to be a part of it. Who are you choosing and why? Wait, if I think I can like be on their show or like what? You could be a part of the project, any, any person in, in history. Hey, I had this before. Okay, y'all gonna y'all may need to edit this out. Plies is so funny to me. Like I just want I haven't seen him having a podcast, but I think he is so freaking funny. Like I would just that I have to produce it. Like put this in the ether because the stuff that comes out of his mouth it's like hella left but then also is like oh he makes perfect sense like yeah. you know like so that would be one I mean then it comes to like women's empowerment I think everyone as far as in the female forefront is already doing stuff so I'm like hmm you know he do the Oprah route but like actually like entertaining plies like he is so funny to me. I'm gonna think of someone else that's more along the lines of like. <laughs> well, well, I, 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 but I just, I just think of it. I'm like, he is so funny. Yeah, he's he'll, hilarious. He'll, he'll give you something to digest every day when he, you know, right. when he decides to open his mouth. Okay. Right. Yes. Exactly. So. And that, that's just that he networked himself too, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. and he networked the music business because I know plenty of times when I watch him and he throw out them songs and he get to singing it, I go Google it. <laughs> exactly exactly I just like I think the biggest thing 
and takeaway is like authenticity. Like mm. I want to work with people who are authentic. Like, you know, sometimes I have to look at what do they call it? Like the test run throughs of people. I'm like, either this person is so boring or like, well, who are they? You know, like the people are on, it's great. But if like, this is not what your personality is, like, it's not going to be great yeah. but people who are just authentic and want to learn and just ask like left questions that's it that's why the read is so popular like they're just so funny and authentic and they don't sugarcoat it for anyone and that's what quality audio is to me you know good stuff good stuff okay so for mine i'm gonna try to steal one of theo's one that he be using so if you could only have three apps on your phone, what three apps would that be? Oh, gosh. Um, I guess let me be a bird and say Instagram because I like probably I'm on it all the time. It's just like, <laughs> like an app. Um, I mean, my banking app because I want to check my money. So I got to have that. That's okay. That's number one. Like if I have to pick a social media, probably be Instagram like. People try to add me on Facebook. I'm like, why? I'm not here to add to this ecosystem. But on Instagram, I'll go on my stories, even if I don't post on. Uh, Let's see the third one. Okay. (laughs) Shameless plug. Meditation app. I just started partnering with this meditation app called Round Glass. And it's really cool. Like, I really, really, I'm like, why am I not doing this more like meditating via app? I'm super, I have a very, very strict regimen. Like I am, I journal probably for like 30 minutes. I read my Bible, I pray, I breathe. Because if I don't, I'm just not going to be good for anyone. So like has to be like a meditation app. Like that is, that's actually the other advice I gave in other questions. Like mm-hmm. meditate, you get to like, don't let anyone alter your, okay, you know, even now, I'm like, you know, breathe, <laughs> take it, just handle it. That's me. I'm like, handle it. Well, just, just do it, you yeah, know? Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yes, yes. Now, but before quick, we get... Well, oh, yeah, go I was going to say, shout your uh, social media and how for people to get at you. I am DJ C. Devone at DJ C, as in Crystal, D as in dog, E-V-O-N-E. Uh, not dog. That's terrible. <laughs> it's just DJ Cedarbone. Uh, at gmail.com, uh, Instagram, everything. That's how I'm really easy to find. Um, I'm always talking about mental health and DJing and podcast shows. And yeah, I mean, if you just want daily tips on mental health, um, I'm your girl too. And I'm a yogi as well, even though I haven't. It's been a rough day, so I haven't been doing yoga in a couple of months, but I'm going to get back on. I just haven't found the right studio in Atlanta. Yes. All in Atlanta, right? Yes, we okay, are. I thought so. Okay, making sure. Yes, All right. But I want to definitely say thanks for interviewing with us today and us learning your journey. And it's been a pleasure to have you on here, especially to know about your podcast and in, uh, meditation, because I like to meditate too, so I'm going to check out that app. Um. Like I say, I wish you much success for 2022, happiness, and anything you got going on in Atlanta, let us know because we like to come out and support. Yeah. Uh, we really do go out to our to different events and stuff like that. So let us know. Um, since we're I there. will. I will. Juneteenth. There's so much stuff happening uh, from the glow up, which is going to be so cool that Vice is doing Unbothered. Refinery 29 is so cool. Skating is going to be, we're actually doing um, a live podcast in there for Go Off Sis, one of the shows that I'm a lead producer on. That's going to be super, that's fun. I'm excited about that because they're going to like be skating in another room. It's going to be all black business markets. And um, yeah, I mean, Sally, I have to work because I just want to go and skate and just have fun. (laughs) But, you know, making sure that they're up to speed. And I think there's a a couple of HBCU events that's going to be happening Juneteenth. That's going to be yeah. really, really dope. So I'm going to try to get on the turntables real quick and then go back yeah. <laughs> and produce yeah, these I shows. Know. So, yeah, but that's what it's about. You got to, you know, I guess the gr- I hate the word grind. Are we still using that word these days? I hate it. It still works. It still works. It still works. I feel like I want to just like work. But then like, don't call me tomorrow because I'm on vacation. Like that, I, that's the life I'm going for. Like, yeah. We could do it all, but then like the, today, like tomorrow, like don't call her because she, she in a sauna resting. 
<laughs> let's, let's do a do in the word for that. <laughs> <laughs> we all be needing that. But definitely have a great Wednesday today. Be blessed out there and be safe out there. And we'll Thank keep in you. touch.